The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of harvest to send laborers to his harvest. He summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your step to pagan territory and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, rise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the devils. You receive without charge, give without charge. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the opening prayer today, we said to our Lord, Lord, give us your grace, give us your help, because without your grace, we can do nothing. And this is important, dear brother and sister, every Sunday, when we participated, like today, at Eucharist, that we feel this need to receive the grace of God and to be aware that really without him we can do nothing. This introduces us to the beautiful first reading we have proclaimed today where Moses tells people what means to obey to God. Obey to God means to fulfill his commandment, but fulfill not in a way that uh, we keep something for ourselves and we put something or we give something to God. Obedience, trust to God or trust in God is 100%. This is what Moses tried to explain to the people. Unfortunately, most of the time, uh, like it happened at the time of Moses, even now, we are more used to complain to God instead of to obey to him. And we complain because uh, we do not see things uh, coming true. Maybe we don't see that our prayer are fulfilled. And so sometimes we complain to God. Moses tells in this first reading, that obedience means to have a complete trust in him because without him we can do nothing and we have to accept his plan his plans and we have to be completely on his side so even when we don't see uh, that our prayers are heard from god or we don't see that what we are expecting from god are we are not really receiving we have to put aside our human expectation and we have to obey. Obey, Moses tells, means to trust God 100%. Trust God completely without any reservation. And this also, dear brothers and sisters, introduces us to the second reading, beautiful passage of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, the ministry of reconciliation. I think that today, you know, we are celebrate Father's Day. And of course, uh, beside the beautiful meals that I imagine oh, that today you will share, I know that also 
Susan downstairs uh, are preparing a special breakfast today, you know, for Father's Day, I think uh, we have to focus on this ministry of reconciliation that fathers can really do and play in our families and in our society. St. Paul tells us that uh, God reconciled us in Christ. So we have been reconciled, but after this reconciliation through the dead and resurrection of Jesus, we ourselves, we are called to exercise this ministry of reconciliation. So beside the ministry of mercy, beside the ministry of healing and other ministry, we have this important ministry in our life, in our church, in our community, the ministry of reconciliation. And St. Paul tells to the Romans and tells to us today that we, those who believe in Jesus, are the one who can really keep alive this reconciliation that God, of course, realizes and brings to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. But we ourselves have to become minister of reconciliation and witness of reconciliation. So, really, we pray today that uh, all the fathers, you know, the fathers we are celebrating today, you know, in this joyful feast and joyful day, they can really be an exercise in their family, you know, this role of reconciliation, that we can feel that in a family we are reconciled and we are united by the presence of the Lord. And of course, uh, dear brother and sister, we go to the page of the gospel today. Jesus tells that uh, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. And so we are called to pray, to pray for vocation, to pray that uh, our Lord sends, the Lord of the harvest sends more laborers we know, dear brother and sister, that the issue of the vocation becomes uh, very serious in our church. And indeed, uh, we also know through this beautiful page of the gospel that vocations are gifts of God. So it's not something human. That's why we are called to pray. That's why every year we celebrate a special day of prayer of vocation. Usually is the fourth Sunday of Easter. We are called because we know that vocation is a gift from God, but of course we know also that vocation needs an opening of the heart for those who receive the call of God. And of course, uh, dear brother and sister, we know that uh, we are facing a very serious problem in uh, our church for shortages of vocation, because today it's very difficult especially for our young brothers and sisters, to understand the life commitment. I remember, dear brother and sister, when I was in Africa, in Zambia and Malawi, I was receiving uh, many, many young students from Northern Europe. You know, they were coming for doing an experience of two, three months you know, in, uh, in Zambia and Malawi. And some of them, they were telling me, Nuncio, I would like to be a sister, I would like to be a priest, but only for five years only for 10 years. But you know, when we see the sister, the priest, the missionary working, we are so impressed. We would like to do what they are doing. But uh, mamma mia, all life, this is something that really scares us. And this is one of the problems, the life commitment. Unfortunately, we see this not only in the in the church with the vocation, we see also in on the families, in the marriage, in the commitment. So, but because vocation are a gift from heaven, because vocation is a call to come from God, dear brothers and sisters, we really have to understand that it is a life commitment, especially because God called us to belong to him forever, not for a shortest period of time or according to our own expectation. And of course, uh, I like very much in the page of the gospel today, when Jesus sends these apostles, no? and he sends these apostles and give them some instruction. Three words, no? go, proclaim, and cure the sick. 
this is what we, especially priests, especially those who are committed and consecrated, but also I think all those who are part of the community, of Christian community, what are called to do. Dear brother and sister, we are not called to entertain people, you know. We are not called to entertain people. So, this is not our mission. I, I sometimes I see very often in our parish, in our communities, that we just entertain people. Uh, hallelujah. No, you know, this is part. But we are called to go. We are called to proclaim. And we are called to heal, to cure the sick. So that's why Pope Francis repeats very often, he doesn't like uh, standby Catholics in the church because, uh, you know, that's what really is against the mandate that Jesus tells and gives to the apostle, go, 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 go. So go means that we have to move. The church is on move. We cannot just stand and wait for something. But not only go, we are need to proclaim, to be sign of the living presence of God in the world. And through this, we may also heal the people through the ministry of reconciliation to the ministry of love. So, dear brothers and sister, in this special day, we pray for all fathers. Eh? They may exercise the ministry of reconciliation. And we became aware that without God, we cannot do nothing. So that we are called to obey. We are called to entrust our life to him. We are called to go, to proclaim, and to heal. Amen.